Welcome everyone and thank you for granting me your time and listening, hearkening to a few words on Heidegger on Hölderlin, Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. I shall read a passage from the Contributions to Philosophy, the Beiträge zur Philosophie vom Ereignis, a book by Heidegger, which is sometimes referred to as his second magnum opus. I will read section 105 because it seems to be decisive on what we can refer to as nihilism or this profound meaning crisis, crisis of meaning, destruction of sense. And before I begin to read this passage, I want to refer to the passage, passage right before passage 105, which is 104, on German idealism. And Heidegger here says, and this is something I always come back to, is that Heidegger is a response to German idealism and to this fulfillment, completion of Occidental metaphysics and what this means for the world. And what Heidegger says about German idealism, Hegel, Schelling, Fichte and Kant is, here once again is sought complete security, Sicherheit, Gewissheit, against all uncertainty. That means a conclusive grip on the correctness of absolute certainty, but also unwittingly an evasion of the truth of being. No bridge leads from here to the other beginning. So German idealism shuts off and closes the possibility for the other beginning and therefore is an amplifier, an accelerator of nihilism ultimately, according to Heidegger. Now, what he, I think, is trying to say here, what we can read or how we can interpret Heidegger here is that what we now see is the frenzy of subjectivity pushing itself to its utmost limit. The subject becomes a pure self-positing subject without any resistance from objectivity, without any resistance from the objective world, without any resistance from nature that it would admit or allow for, but sheer, a sheer will to control and dominate and dominate and posit itself. The ego cogito, the I think, therefore I am, is fulfilled, is completed in German idealism. And for Heidegger, Hölderlin, Kierkegaard and Nietzsche are, if you like, prophets of the darkness of the age to come, my alter ego, John Wilvar has a song, which is, I see a darkness in the sky. You can find that on Spotify, if I may mention this. So I shall read now this passage by Heidegger. No one today may be so presumptuous as to consider it a mere coincidence that these three had to come to an untimely end. They who each in his own way at last suffered most deeply the uprootedness to which Western history is driven, and who at the same time surmised their gods most intimately. So he's speaking of Hölderling, Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. What is being prepared? Was bereitet sich vor? So what is preparing itself? What is coming? What is this major shift? What is involved in the fact that Hölderlin, the earliest of these three, also becomes the one who poetized the furthest ahead at a time when thinking once again aspired to an absolute knowledge of the entire previous history. So what Heidegger is saying here, as a hint, I think, is that Hölderlin becomes someone who poetizes towards something that's coming, vorausdichtend, towards the future, as the little bird, the Halkion, 
is looking towards the future. And but at a time when all of a sudden the history of philosophy, the Geschichte, the Seinsgeschichte der Philosophie comes to complete itself and comes to make itself absolute and also com comes to self-reflect on itself absolutely. Hölderlin for Heidegger is the one who begins to think ahead from out of that absolute or aspiration towards absolute knowledge. But from out of that history. What hidden or concealed history, welche verborgene Geschichte, what concealed history of the much invoked 19th century occurred here? So there's for Heidegger a concealed history that we are yet to find. What law of motion, welches Bewegungsgesetz, so he literally speaks of a law of motion, of what is to come is being prepared here. So for Heidegger, if we take him seriously here, we find in Hölderlin, we could find in Hölderlin, Kierkegaard and Nietzsche, the law of motion of what is to come, of what is preparing itself in this very epochal shift that we are suffering through. Must we not now, Heidegger continues, turn our thinking around to very different domains and measures and ways to be in order that we might still belong to the newly dawning necessities? Or does this history remain inaccessible to us as a ground of Dasein, of their being, not because it is past, but on the contrary, because it is still too futural for us? Question mark. So Heidegger does not respond to this. He leaves this question there open and these are questions to himself because this book wasn't supposed to be published at least not for decades to come so he asks himself or he asks his potential readers what the proper response to this is isn't is it necessary that we that we begin to think completely differently and lean into what is to come or is it that we rather must connect to history and find from out of there the future of the of of what is arriving and Hölderlin is the is for Heidegger I think the the anchor of of this of this unforetold future there's something in Hölderlin for Heidegger which goes deeper than than even and than even Nietzsche the recognition that the div that divinities have evaporated, evaporated, have disappeared, and there's something that's not forced about Hölderlin. There's something genuine. It's not forced, as for example, sometimes when you read Rilke, there's something a bit forced, sterile, and artificial, maybe about him. When you read Hölderlin, that's not so much the case. And most importantly, I think here is this notion of am weitesten vorausdichtend, so poetizing the furthest ahead, is that from out of this movement, this epochal shift, this new or different law of motion, which we not, which we don't yet know fully, in this moment where there's the aspiration to absolute certain knowledge, explicated or articulated by German idealism, there is already the possibility inscribed to poetize ahead and lean ahead into what is to come in order to overcome or get over from within these terrors or horrors that modernity quite obviously also has in store. For us, but with but with 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 with, with which the subjectivity cannot deal because it only knows itself and can only posit itself. Hence, even death must be worked against. Even death must be eradicated. Even death is not allowed to be. It's this utter non-availability and withdrawal and concentration of concealment mustn't be. 
But the task then for future thinkers, for the philosophers of the future, of which also Nietzsche speaks in Beyond Good and Evil, the f- true free spirits, not the free thinkers, but the free spirits, those who are capable of preserving themselves. And Nietzsche also says that they will be concealed under coats of light. So those philosophers of the future must be able to poetize ahead into the future from out of that which has been, so that this uprootedness of thought this ungroundedness of thought, right? These isms that are floating around everywhere. So those are overcome. And there's again a genuine access to history, to this extended memory through which we live and breathe and die. So thank you very much for granting me your time and listening. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. There's more to come, I shall hope. And I would be very grateful also if you could support my endeavors here on Patreon or via PayPal. Thank you very much indeed.